Guys, welcome to Iris After Hours. Here we are, incognito, hidden away in a little part of the old city of Jerusalem with somebody who we are gonna call Gwendolyn. We are so privileged to have you come and share your heart for God's people, for Israel, and for what God is doing in this land. So, Gwendolyn, welcome to Oris After Hours. Thank you, it's good to see you. Good it was see. so much fun meeting you at that awesome praise and worship with all these young believers in Israel. How, how good was that? I know, it was like, whoa, full tilt crawling out and the presence was so there. I know. It's so contrary color. to what the news of the world says yes. and what many believe and all the difficulties, because it's true, Jerusalem and Israel is ground zero for the spiritual battle, who's going to be worshipped on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem? Come Satan on. or the God and the Messiah of Israel? Come on. But to see those young people here and to know that there is something happening undercover that the Lord himself is doing in this land is amazing. It's exciting. Wow. And I really have a heart that all believers, but especially the tribe of Iris, I mean, IRIS is known worldwide as a missionary organization. That's yes. a problem. IRIS does not exist in Israel. It couldn't exist in no. Israel exactly. because of the laws and the rabbinical religious authorities <clears throat> have anti-missionary laws and anti-evangelism laws, yeah. which is why... And proselytization is right, not allowed. And, and nobody's seeing me because we just don't want any problems for any of that yeah because it's a pretty much a covert operation yeah, i mean it's you. yeah it, it's just right now the laws are such that it's very yeah. difficult for believers yeah for jewish believers to visit, it's not a problem to visit but, but to actually reside here and to to be here and to study or whatever it's yeah. it, you've got to be very careful it's true for jewish believers in the land i, I mean i know i've heard that as the well the bible has said all jews in the end times which we are in the lord will call back to israel but the laws and the powers that be for Aliyah, for immigrants to come back, are such that they find out the Jews who are born Jews. I mean, their parents are Jews, their grandparents yeah. are Jews. If they find out they believe in the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua, they deny them the right to immigrate to this land. That's amazing. If they find out they're here or they're married to a spouse who's a believer, be a Gentile believer or a Jewish believer, they will deny visas. They will kick them out of the land. I mean, it is almost impossible to be here. So what about if they're a citizen? What if they're, if they're here, they're a citizen as a, as a Jew, and, yes. they, and they become messianic? Right. Then they're, they're, which, are they safe? Which right now, for me, I believe is the greatest hope for the nation of Israel. It is the messianic body of Jewish believers in the Jewish Messiah who are here. The government may this not is what we like spoke it. About in our podcast yesterday. This is crazy. The government may not like it. The religious leaders, the powers that be that give visas and aliyah may not like it. But yeah. these people are Jews in the nation. They yeah. cannot kick them out and are unlikely to deny citizenship. Yeah. But anything short of that, visas, residency, whether you're Jewish or a Gentile believer, whether you are a Zionist, whether you love the Jewish people, whatever it's like to live here is closed. Yeah. So for me, he has put me being here with Messianic believers, with young people, with the prayer houses, praying. There are wonderful Christian opportunities, our organizations here doing humanitarian works that have been here for years. Yeah. There are prayer houses, you know, people know from Heidi's friends and people here, amazing prayer houses. Yes. Prayer houses are important. The humanitarian work is important. The Christian organizations that are amutas, nonprofits here, have done a tremendous job for years building bridges that were total rift between Christians and Jews because of so much done yes. historically against the Jewish people in the name of Christians who were anything but living the life of Christ and of Christ. manifesting but his hands and feet on the earth. Right, they, were, exactly. they weren't doing that. Yeah. But that's the name they know. All of that's important. Yeah. But we can feed them and clothe them and give them bomb shelters and we can pray for them. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus himself said, no one comes to the Father but by me. me. There is no salvation. There is no atonement of sins, even under in the under Tanakh. Under no other name. Under no other name and by the shedding of blood. And it was yeah. his blood. So Come for on. all the good works that we do and all the prayer in the prayer houses, if nobody is going out in this nation and speaking the gospel outside the church walls, outside the prayer houses, in the marketplace, in the schools, in the workplaces, to the Jewish people about their Jewish Messiah, that his given name was Yeshua, Hebrew means salvation, for he alone will bring the salvation of his people. Come on. 
in what has been taught by much of the Christian church, his replacement theology, you know, God is done with the Jews, they yeah, blew it, they killed them. Everywhere there's Israel, you can just put yeah. the church. I mean, it's like there. lie, 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 read the book, y'all. Yeah. Read the book in yeah. the context, Old Testament, mm. New Testament. Yeah. But the rabbis have also taught against Yeshua. They have expunged the book of Isaiah 53. They have expunged David talking about the Messiah, Psalm 22. They have taught against the Jewish Messiah. There is a vitriol hate for him that is taught by the Orthodox rabbis to the Orthodox people. Yeah. So really the only people that are probably most going to be able to reach them. I mean, one of my prayers, Lord, do for the Jews what you've done for the Muslims. Show up in dreams and visions. Because when you show it's, it's up yourself... Almost, it's almost like that. Yeah. Now, what were you saying before about this is one of the most unreached people groups? Yes. Yeah, so I think what many people don't realize is the 1040 window, okay, the organizations, quote unquote, that are missionary organizations, know Jesus told us, go into the world, preach the gospel to all yeah. nations, and then the end will come. Yeah. So they look at all nations, and they've devised this window, the 1040 window, which is the area of greatest spiritual darkness. Well, Israel is in the middle of the 1040 window. That's crazy. It is not a third world nation by any means, no. but it is in that same belt of spiritual darkness because of the partial blindness that came on the Jews. The Christians that are in this city have been here for 100 years. They are orthodox religions. They are not born again, yeah. filled with the spirit, and we have Islam here. Yeah. So we have three major religions all fighting with no light of the gospel, no light of the Holy Spirit. This is a very intense place to be. But Messianic Jews who know the culture, who know the language, who know what the rabbis have taught against and have a revelation for the Jewish Messiah in the context of his Jewishness, of the promises that God made to the Jewish people that includes the Gentile believers as well, but the Gentiles in the so-called church of Yeshua, Jesus, has never replaced the Jewish people. No. Never, ever. Paul was very clear, all Israel will be saved. Yeah. God has said from Genesis to Revelation, these are my people, the Jews are the elect, to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I will give this land forever. He did not give it to the sons of Ishmael. I'm sorry, it's not politically correct, but it's biblically true. The Christian Arabs, yeah. the Palestinians have no right to this land. God gave it to the Jewish people yeah. as an eternal covenant. Yeah. They have not realized all of that, but the time is coming. And Israel is God's time clock. And when Israel became a nation in one day, in 1948, things are 70 clicking. years ago. 70 years ago. I mean, this is an amazing year. 70 years, the 50 year reunification yeah. you know, of Jerusalem. But it's an amazing time. It appears that the devil is having his way. Yeah. And in the world press and the fake news and the leaders of the government, this and that. But I came to salvation, okay, in Jesus when I was not a believer. And I came through a miracle healing with no one laying hands on me by the word of God. You tell us what happened. Okay. Born and raised in the United States denominational religion, but nothing born again, nothing about the devil, nothing about the power of God, nothing about healing, nothing. At, at uh, 18, after high school, I'd been very active in sports. I was playing with friends and family in a park overlooking the Great Lakes area, Lake Michigan, playing a fast game of dodgeball, lost my balance, went flying to the edge of the cliff, the fence gave way, and I went flying at a full tilt running 20 feet over a cliff, head down to the beach below, literally landed on the top of my head, and in one instant accordioned my entire spine from that fall. I lost consciousness, I had amnesia, I lost feeling in my arms, my spine was so damaged, nerve vertebrae, that doctors said, your spine is so damaged, you will be partially disabled for life, you will be in excruciating pain, and there's nothing we can do, it's inoperable. So raised, quote unquote, a nominal Christian, knew nothing about the power. I lived in, for 20 years, in absolute pain. The doctor said all we can do is put you on narcotic uh, medication. The older you get, the worse the pain you get, the stronger the narcotics will get. I lived in nonstop pain for 20 years, Went from Tylenol 1 to 2 to 3, Vicodin codeine all the way up, partial disability, no hope at all for any of that. From a, as a 20-year-old? Yeah, well, 19. 19. Yeah, and literally for 20 years, 
and left the church because when I went to college, the whole Eastern thing and the gurus were there. I believed in God. I went looking for God in all the wrong places, Eastern mysticism, the supernatural, you know, New Age, et cetera, et cetera, none of which could help or heal me either. And one day, by the mercy and grace of God, October of 1989, I'm sitting in my home alone and I hear an audible voice of God that says, nothing is impossible for God. I will heal you. I mean, wow, out of you heard nowhere. the voice of God. That's I amazing. Knew, I didn't know any, I'd never met any believing Christians, born again, nothing about the power of God. I had not been with Christians or to a church. I'd gone off into spirituality, you know, Eastern mysticism. But I knew from having been in church as a kid, that came from the Bible. And I was shocked. I'm like, what is going on and what do I need to do now? And there was a sense in me, and I know now it's the Holy Spirit, but I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit at the time. Get a Bible, read the books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. So I went to the library, they had Bibles, I checked out a Bible, I read that. I mean, just nonstop, read, 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 read. Got the, but the Bible out of the library? Yeah, out of the library. That's I mean, awesome. I didn't have one, I didn't know anyone yeah. who had one, I hadn't been into church in 20 years. Thank God the library has Bibles. Yeah, I was like, they still have Bibles. <laughs> so I got it and I read it. And I finished reading it, and I said, I, when I was in church, I didn't know this. I mean, what I saw in those books was the love and compassion of Jesus. He healed, he healed, he healed, he healed all. It's all there in black and white. I mean, black and red. everybody, he healed them all. He told the apostles to do the same. He sent out the 70 to do the same. The early church in the book of Acts, Stephen, a waiter on tables, is doing miracles. I mean, it was healing and a relationship with the Father, a relationship with Jesus and a love that healed. So I finished reading these chapters and I sat there and I said, I never heard any of this. I mean, when I went to a so-called Christian church, which I did with our family, because in America, right, everybody's Christians. Here, everybody says they're Jewish, whether they are or not, and they believe in God or not. In America, at the time, we're a Christian nation. Yeah. And I never heard any of that. So I sat there and I said, Jesus, I don't know if this is true. I've never heard this before. Even if you healed 2,000 years ago, I don't know if you heal in 1989. I've never seen it done. I've never heard of it. But I have lived in pain for 20 years. And if there's anything you can do, help. That's not even a prayer of faith, but it was like I was so desperate. It's like if this is a door and nothing happened. I mean, I'm sitting there, you know, and it's like nothing happens. But there was this sense in me like I was supposed to do something. From the inside, it was like I'm supposed to do something. And it's like, Okay, I've never been to church. I've never seen healing. I've never been mentored. I don't know anything about, you know, yep. being a believer in Jesus and a relationship with him. But I remembered what I just read in the book. I read in the word of God. He said he cast out demons. Yep. He healed the sick. He said, speak to your mountain. Come he on. didn't pray to God. He told people to pray. So I sat there and I'm like, okay. And I mean, I felt like so foolish, but what have you got to lose, right? I'm in my house alone and it's like, okay, Come on. If it happens, it happens if it doesn't, you know. But I sat there and I said, okay, in the name of Jesus, if there's any demons involved in this, go in the name of Jesus. Pain in my body, get out in the name of Jesus and don't come back. In spine, you be healed in the name of Jesus. I said those three sentences, and they clicked like a mantra. I mean, they just kept coming out of my mouth nonstop, three sentences for 30 minutes, and all of a sudden, all the pain was gone in my body. All of the pain after 20 years was gone in my body. Oh, my Lord. And I knew Jesus had healed me. Whoa! That was my introduction. As someone who was not saved, didn't know anything about him, this was my introduction. Come to the on. Jewish Messiah. Yeah. Jesus in English, but he is the Jewish Messiah. Yeah. And it's what led me to the Lord. It was like eventually he led me to Christian television. I wanted to know about this book that I just read because I had been healed by the word of God, the person of and the written word. Come on. You know, so eventually he led me to a spirit-filled church and I got everything right. I got born again and I got water baptized. And when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit and that power was on me, he, what he did for me, he began doing through me. 
miracles of healing, instant healing, creative miracles. Wow. Because he had put that compassion in me. Yep. 20 years of being in pain. I mean, and it wasn't just back and spine injuries. I saw Jesus heal them all. So people would come with cancer or diabetes. It doesn't matter. The word he'd shown me, he healed them all. The only limitation is what's between our brain. Come on. You know, and I had a compassion just to help heal people. It was how I came to the Lord. Wow, of course, yeah. So that was, you know, a ministry that he used me for all over, you know, just with different ministries and my local church and travels and trips and whatever. And I mean, I never thought in my mind ever to be a cross-cultural missionary. I don't use that word here, which is why I'm very to say it even on tape. Yeah. Because I'm not. Yeah. You know, I mean, not in the sense that either the Jews or many Christians think a missionary. I am a believer. Yep. In the living God. Come on. And in the Messiah who has such love that healing was a part of our atonement. He didn't just forgive our sins. Yeah. Healing was part of what he purchased at the cross. Come on. And he's not only the Messiah of Israel and the Savior of not only the Jewish people who he came and gave his life for, but also for Gentiles, all peoples who would believe. Absolutely. And he is the king of the lineage of David, who in the near future is coming back to this city to the Jewish people to reign over the Jewish people and all of the nations of the world from this city. Come on. And I got connected through that, through a miracle healing, through love, through it. That's incredible. So long. So, so how did you get connected with Iris eventually? What was that story? Well, I mean, knowing, loving Jesus, because I do, I, you know, somehow, and I, and I, I won't tell you where I live, but let's just say I know friends that Heidi regularly works with. So I yeah. got exposed to her conferences and to teachings and healings and YouTube and watching because I just absolutely love the laid down love. Yeah. And for and for Roland as well. I mean, what they've given. And as they say, and it's genuine, it isn't what they've given up for Jesus. It's their love for Jesus. It's like every time I listen to either one of them, I get inspired and convicted at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> me too. I, mean, I need more of you, Lord, and less of me. You know, it's like I'm a work in progress. We're getting there, on, but there's a long way to go. Yeah. So <clears throat> one one day, I mean, again, out of the clear blue, because I've lived now with the Holy Spirit and done many things and seen what the Lord has done through me, so I know his voice. And... Uh, 2016, out of the clear blue, the Holy Spirit says, go on the Iris website. And I mean, I knew, you know, I, I partnered with Iris financially and prayers and whatever, but never been called Africa, never a missionary. I'm like, okay, I've never followed the website. And the Holy Spirit highlights Rio School. And he says, I want you going to that in January. And I'm like, really? Come on, <laughs> like, Come with on. Fred and Fernanda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I ended up doing the Rio School. I thought, well, that's awesome. What a great way to start the new year in the secular calendar. Because I was free. You know, I could go, given the nature of my work and whatever. My schedule was flexible. And spend a month and do healing. Because Gramacho on the base there and the needs of the people. And just to be with people from around the world on fire for the Holy Spirit. Knowing how full tilt everybody in Iris is for just going for Jesus, worshiping Jesus, praying for Jesus. Come Come on, on. Holy Spirit, have your way. It's like, what a great way to start the year for a month. So that was a month program. And toward the end of that, I don't know, maybe like 10 days or something before, or a week before the program ended, we were just worshiping one morning. I mean, nobody was teaching it, and it was just the presence of the Lord. And this is like their outdoor setting, concrete stones like this. I went flying under the power of the Holy Spirit with nobody touching me, laid out on the stones for about two hours and ended up having a face-to-face with Jesus. Wow. Who basically said, what worked when I was in Israel? He said, when I walked the earth, the government hated me. The message I brought, so did the Jewish leaders. I did signs, wonders, and miracles. I healed the people. I demonstrated the power and the love, and I taught the word of God. And people came despite governmental opposition, despite religious opposition. And out of that was birthed, you know, the explosion of the reality of our wonderful God yeah. and his Savior in Israel and from Israel and Judea to the rest of the world, the including the to me. Yeah. <clears throat> he said, I need that now in Israel, and I don't have it. There are Christians that tour there. There are Christians that give money there. 
There are a few Messianic Jews there, many of whom are undercover and hidden and hiding because they're so extremely persecuted. People are praying. People are giving financial offerings to help the poor and the Holocaust survivors. But yeah. he said nobody's going out and giving the message of the kingdom and demonstrating it with power. Whoa. He said that's what needed. He said that's what I did for you. And that's what I've done through you. Will you go? And will you allow me to use you to demonstrate my power to my people to whom you are connected and owe a debt that you can never repay to the Jewish people? And that's true for every believer, every believer. And I was so wrecked, you know, in the love and the, yes, Lord, you know. And I had no idea until I got here of how totally impossible in the natural that is because everything yeah. is against it. You know, the culture is, the religion is, the certain governmental laws That's are. That's crazy, isn't it? Both for, both for Messianic Jewish believers and, and certainly for Gentile believers that can come on a tourist visa. But he has brought me here and kept me here for the last year and a half. And so it's been 18 now. months and he's making a way? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's made a way. And it's like, believe me, to live here for your citizenship. And it's like, okay, Lord, you called me here. Are you believing for your citizenship? Absolutely. Come on, yes. Which we is agree. not, which is not, you know, I in the natural Jesus now. But it's no. like, if that's where of he's course. called me, and that's what he said, be. But let's believe for the it's impossible. Like, yes, Lord. Yep. But 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 being here, I've had to be very careful where I go, what I do, because I mean, I'm. There are like intense people looking for to get out, and the Messianic believers in this land are persecuted. They have Jews coming at them, threatening their lives, their meeting places, their homes to landlords to get them kicked out. They call them missionaries because the Jewish rabbis believe that if a Jew becomes a believer in the Jewish Messiah, they see that as a conversion to another religion. You're Christian, therefore you're not Jewish. We'll cut you off and you have no right to live in the land. Right. And the Christian religion has also believed as missionaries we have to convert every other religion in the world. That is not true for the Jewish people. No. Jesus is the Messiah of Israel. He mm. came for the Jewish people. He lived, died, he sacrificed. He's their prophesied prophet. Yeah. He's fulfilled it. Praise God, not for the Jews only, for all who would believe. Thank he you. is the king. Thank you, God. Who is coming back. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. But it's going to take, I think, Jewish believers here in the land that can relate to the Jewish people, the culture, yeah. to know the language and to know not just the Jewishness of Jesus, it's the root. Yes. And and we as like believers. Like in Romans, it talks about the root. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, when I meet with other believers from the nations here, it's like I talk to them about the Jewish Messiah. If Christians would change one word, instead of saying Jesus Christ, if we would change that, Yeshua is his Hebrew name, but it's Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. But if we would use the name Messiah instead yeah. of Christ, Christ Christos, Latin, Jewish, the church of the Lord Jesus was neither birthed nor is the center of it in Rome. Right. It is in Jerusalem. It has always been. And even just the word Messiah, Savior, would link believers, Gentile believers, to hear yes. Jewish Messiah to the city of the great king, which is Jerusalem, to this nation, which he gave to the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel, forever, where he's coming back. And where the word of God says, if we are the bride of Christ, yeah. we're going to be in this city with him ruling and reigning with Yeshua here. And, and there's such a disconnect, unfortunately, between the Christian church, the Gentile church, which became westernized. Mm. And it's like it's the root that supports the branches. Yeah. You know, the Bible says Jesus said we're branches. We've been grafted in. We've been, yeah. But we've been grafted in to the family of Abraham of faith and to the Jewish people. And it's like, what a mercy and grace of God and what a privilege, but we're still connected. Yes. You know, Paul talks about one new man. That's in Romans 8, isn't it? The grafted in. That's, well, it's grafted in and all through there. It's the yeah. one new man that Paul talks about. Yes. And you've seen a taste of it. And I don't know if you're aware of it. When I first came to Israel, I mean, I love worship, okay? I've worshiped with believers of all nations and whatever all over the world and the, praising the Lord is awesome. But I'm telling you, when I came to Jerusalem and started being in Messianic congregations with Gentile and Jewish believers worshiping the Lord together in the land of Israel, it takes his presence and worship to a whole new level. Come on. 
I mean, it just is. It's like Papa is pleased. Yes. When the body of Messiah comes together to its roots in the land where he came from, where he's coming back, and where we will be. Yes. You know, it's the new Jerusalem that's coming down. It's not the new Rome or the new London or the new whatever. It's yeah. like it's the yeah. new Jerusalem. The new Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, Paul was so clear. All Israel will be saved. Yeah. And unfortunately, most of the Christian church is not teaching that yeah. to people. And we are grafted in. Yes, we're spiritual Israel. But he has never done away with his chosen people, his elect. He's sovereign. He can pick who he wants. He picked the Jewish people. Yeah. That's never changed. He said, my covenant with you is eternal. All Israel will be saved. We see it in Isaiah. We see it in Zechariah. We see it in Jeremiah. We see it from Jesus. We see it in Paul. I mean, when I finally, in being here for this last year, his, the Lord's highlighting to me more of the prophecies yeah. for the nation of Israel, for the Jewish people, and where it has to come together for Jewish and Gentile believers. One is that Gentile believers owe a debt to the Jewish people that they can never repay. Were it not for the Jews and their perseverance and their faithfulness to the Word of God and to write it and to teach it and to keep it and to make it available, and for the Jewish believers, all of Jesus' apostles were Jews. All of the mm. early church was Jews. It was a famous Jewish rabbi, Shaul, who took this to the Gentiles. But I went back after being here and having more revelation from the Holy Spirit and read Romans 9. And here's Paul. I mean, probably forever the, the person who has had the greatest connection with Jesus and revelation of the truth. I mean, the author of two-thirds of the Bible by the Holy Spirit, yeah. who knows the heart, the mind, the will of the Lord. And in Romans 9, beginning in chapter 1, his anguish, how he wept and was anguished for the Jewish people. I would be willing to take on the curse and be separated from Messiah for the sake of my brethren, the Jewish people. His I know, that's crazy, anguish. isn't it? His love was so his profound love. for and his like, brothers. And, and that wasn't just Paul. I've been here and Jesus is still weeping. Yeah. He wants his Jewish bride. He told me that when I was near the power of the Holy Spirit. All Israel will be saved. Yes, I'm coming back, but I want my Jewish bride. I want my Israeli come bride. On. There's a remnant yes. before I come back. And we read the story of Joseph. And I mean, everything Joseph went to. But in the end, in Egypt, when the brothers come to him, and he's reconciled, he's weeping. They said his weeping, they heard all through his house, the servants, for him to be reconciled with his brothers who'd rejected him, cast him out after all this time, that's a prototype of Yeshua. Yeah. Jesus, who's been kicked out by the Jewish people, not recognized, yeah. killed, nothing to do. And as Joseph was so gracious to his brothers, I'm not angry with you, I love you. This was the God's doing. Came, yeah. Welcome, be blessed, bless them. How much more when the veil comes off the eyes of the Jewish people to recognize their Jewish Messiah? Jesus is weeping Come on. for his Jewish brothers and sisters wow. in this land. So for me to be here now, it's like, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I don't know how, how I'm going to stay here. I don't know what your plans are, We Lord. are going to be praying for you, that's yeah. for sure. But in the meantime, it's like, I'm here, I'm seeing things, and he's connected me with the body of Messiah. Yeah. And I've had the opportunity in Jewish-speaking congregations who are born again, who are spirit-filled. They're on. small, but they are. Yeah. And in the congregation he put me with, they believe in the gifts of the Spirit. They believed in healing, but they'd never seen it. Well, the pastors heard my story. I prayed for them. There was healing for them. Someone in their congregation had a major cancer. Cancer before, cancer came back, huge tumor, very aggressive. Doctors gave him no hope for living, you know, and it was like, thank you, Jesus. I mean, I love kicking the devils behind anything I can do. Come on. So I said, can I go, you know, to, to your home and pray for your husband? Because he was home and his wife took me. And I laid hands on that tumor. I commanded it to die immediately. It shrank. It didn't disappear in an instant. Immediately it shrank. Everybody's eyes got big. Okay, within two weeks, the thing was totally, totally gone. Yes! He gave his testimony in this Jewish congregation, and I mean, the place lit up. They believed for it, but they hadn't seen it. Well, the elders of the church are all for it. They're encouraging the people to do it. Come on. To go out. This is a Jewish congregation that invited Todd White to come and do a power and love 
seminar here to help train Jewish believers in the land Come on. how to do this, you know, in their day-to-day -day life. And, you know, God bless Todd. Yes. He came and did it, you know, and Good it was idea. awesome. You know, so, I mean, and then this man goes back to his Jewish doctor, his general physician, and says, look what the Jewish Messiah did. Cancer is gone. And then he keeps the appointment with the specialist. He got healed before he could even get in to see a cancer specialist here in Israel. And he goes to see this Jewish doctor in the hospital and gives his testimony. The Jewish Messiah healed me. The tumor's gone. They ran tests. The cancer is gone. They don't know what to do with it. So I'm like, thank you, Lord. Come alongside of the Jewish <laughs> believers, you know, encourage them. Get Come them on. healed. Get the body of the Get them encouraged, you know, however you want to do. But yeah, it's it's just an amazing time to be here, and the Lord is working. And like I said, yeah. you saw the young people. Yes, that the were other night. Praise. Yeah. yeah, the young Jewish believers. And I mean, on fire. Yeah. For him. Yeah. And it's like, and the the Messianic believers. It used to be a few years ago. I mean, just interesting history. If you want history, if we've got time. Yeah. When Israel became a nation, literally the day it became a nation, there were twenty eight. I've talked to people who are here in the land who know who trek it. There were 28 believers in Yeshua in the whole country of Israel. Okay, today, 70 years later, there are about 30,000. Now, in 8 million people, 9 million people, that's not a lot. But the growth in this nation is miraculous. Yeah. That many people. And Messianic believers. It used to be nobody heard of Messianic believers who were Jews. It's like, what's that? Yeah. They don't know the name Yeshua. The rabbis don't call him that. They yeah. call him a derogatory name, so people don't even know the name of the Jewish Messiah. Right. Now there are Jewish organizations, Messianic Jewish uh, organizations that are here. First Hebrew-speaking uh, college, one for Israel, that is doing media stuff that's amazing in Hebrew to counter the rabbis' teachings against Yeshua documentaries of Jews in the land who have come to Yeshua yeah, supernaturally that's, that's and naturally yeah. and bringing them up. You've got a messianic organization called the Joseph Project, which is the largest humanitarian bringer in of humanitarian aid to all of Israel. That is a messianic organization that's now here in the land. So good. You've got messianic congregations, King of Kings, Revive Israel, that are not only helping to change the outside Gentile world, but I mean, they are doing things here in the land that are helping the Jewish people with the humanitarian aids, but they, unlike most of the Christian organizations, are also preaching the gospel. Yes. They are telling people about the Jewish Messiah. And I'm believing and hoping that there's going to be signs, wonders, and miracles, not yes. just talk, but that that is going to come yep. in as well, because when miracles happen, I don't care whose theology or religious, it just goes to nothing, whether it's Muslim, yeah, Christians exactly. that say, you know, yeah. Jesus doesn't heal anymore, or Jews that don't believe it. It's like, guess who just healed you? Yeah. Would you like to know him? Come Which on. is my heart and my love, because that's what he did for me, and that's what I love to do for other people. So, yeah, I mean, it's an exciting, amazing time, and it's crazy. I mean, you know, I was, I was almost on a bus last week that had a bomb on it. I mean, that's also the reality of Israel. They're yeah. constantly under threat. Yeah. On all borders, yep. all their neighbors say they have no right to be here and in the land. No right to exist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so I mean, it's like, it's a crazy making place. This is true. I mean, if, if, if Jesus isn't in this, but he is. Come on. He is. You know, and it's so easy to, the world politics and this and that and the fear and the whatever. And it's like, no, no, no. We have got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Yes. And we have got to know his word. Because our best days are ahead of all of us, and that Whoa. is true for the Jewish people. Come on. In the city of Jerusalem and the nation of Israel. And he has called, and the day he comes back, he says, every family of every nation will come to this city to worship the King of Kings here in Jerusalem. And it's like Whoa. when we're looking at that and what's coming, it's Man. like... You know how it's funny, while you've been talking... Thank you for this. Thank you for sharing your heart and what's going on. I mean, this is very good for all of us to hear and understand more of what the situation is here in Israel. Um, you know how the Bible is very clear to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for the peace of Israel. Um, it just thought, the whole thought came to me is, wow, can you have peace without the Prince of Peace? That basically when you're praying for the peace of Israel or Jerusalem, you're praying that 
Messiah comes yeah. because he's the only one. He is the Prince of Peace. Yeah. There is no peace apart from him. That he will come and and become true and real and mm -hmm. accepted by all in this land. That he is yeah. Yeshua Hamashiach. And the other Jesus, the Messiah. The other thing that's happening here: when Jesus walked the earth, it was like the Jewish people were all looking for the Messiah. Mm. I mean, it was like the whole nation was focused because John the Baptist was there, Messiah's coming, Messiah's coming, Messiah's coming, repent, Messiah's coming. Well, people don't know that here. And, and granted, most of the population of Israel, yes, they're Jewish, but most of them are secular Jews. There's yeah. no connect, you know. But of the ultra-Orthodox who are here and looking, they are saying now, Messiah's coming, Messiah's coming soon. I mean, they're tracking from what they know in the Bible, but they're tracking from their mystical Kabbalah stuff, which really is of the occult and whatever that mixed yeah. in there. But I mean, the Temple Institute has has remade all of the instruments f from that were in the Temple for Moses' time. All they need is the land. The red heifer is now here. You know, nation Israel is in a nation. Jews are coming back from all over the world. They're seeing both in their rabbinic traditions and in the book, it's like he's coming soon and they're looking at things in the heaven and the earthquakes. But if you read the press here of what's coming out, the rabbis are saying, this is another sign, Messiah's coming, this, this, this. I mean, they're looking for it. And he's going to come. I know. <laughs> and it's like in the Gentile believers, for them it's going to be the first coming, right? And for Gentile believers, it's the second coming. Come but on. there is an Someone has said that expectancy before, actually. here, you know, for Messiah. That is incredible. That yeah, it's going to be the first and the second coming. Yeah, I believe it. Thank you so much for sharing your heart, and thank you for being here. Thank you for faithfully serving the Lord and bringing His presence, His power, His healing, and and for believing mm -hmm. and being obedient to our Savior. And thank you. It was so cool seeing you here. I had no idea you'd be here at the event for these kids, and it's like, oh man, family. He connects us all over the places and strangest places and ways, but... I know. Isn't it cool how he connects yeah, us? It's yeah, just crazy. It's just awesome. So thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, no, and we will be praying for you guys. Um, leave some comments below, but please be praying for um, all we've been talking about, yeah. for the peace of Jerusalem. And, and pray for the Jewish Messianic believers in this yeah, land. because they need yeah, I mean, they're they're not they're accepted by the Gentile believers, and they're totally ostracized by the Jews. Yeah. They need our support. They're the best hope. If you're yeah. going to give finances, do it to the Messianic organizations that are doing yeah. it because they're getting a good name Yeah, here because of what they're doing, Yeah, especially the young people. A lot of the young people are coming to faith in Yeshua while they're in the IDF service Yeah, because the young believers are sharing in a military situation with your life is there, these young people are coming. Yeah. And they're getting a great reputation for the government because of what they're doing in the IDF. So the Lord is changing yeah. the opinion of Messianic believers here, and we need to support that. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so good to be here. Guys, thank you for listening to Iris After Hours here on the ground in Jerusalem, and we will be back with another location and another amazing Believe It living in this land very, very shortly. So we love you guys. Leave a comment below, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Iris After Hours. Ciao. This podcast is presented by Iris Global. For more information or to support the work of Iris Global, please visit us online at irisglobal.org. You can also text to give. Simply text the amount you'd like to donate to 530-338-3837. Or to speak to someone at Iris Global, call our office at 530-255-2077. Iris Global is an international Christian mission and relief organization with a focus on working amongst the poorest of the poor and those most in need. We hope this podcast has inspired your journey. Thanks for joining us for Iris After Hours.